Oracle recommends using Enterprise Manager to configure databases to back up to a zero data loss recovery appliance. Enterprise Manager makes it much easier and ensures all the steps are completed correctly. While this is all good, it does hide much of the configuration from the DBA. In this session, I'm going to show you some of what Enterprise Manager does for you behind the scenes. Specifically, I'm going to cover the following topics. Creating the VPC user on the ZDLRA, the libra.so SBT module, the wallet configuration, including SQLnet.org entries, our man configuration, real-time redo shipping configuration, and how to quickly verify real-time redo shipping is working. First, let's talk about the VPC user. Many DBAs are not familiar with Virtual Private Catalogs, or VPC. VPC is an RMAN feature that was introduced in Oracle 11G. It allows multiple users to share the same physical RMAN catalog, but only be able to back up and recover their own databases. The recovery appliance requires the use of Virtual Private Catalogs, and at least one VPC user must be created in the catalog. While only one is required, you can have as many VPC users as you need in your environment. VPC users must be created using the RACLI utility on the RA itself. Currently, RACLI must be run as root. However, a future release will remove this requirement. Please check the documentation and release notes for the latest requirement. I'm logged into a compute node on the RA as root. I will run the RACLI command to add a new VPC user. It will prompt for a password. And you can see the VPC user was added successfully. That's all there is to it. But it is required that the VPC users only be created using RACLI. Do not just create the user in the database with the standard create user command. Since this is just an example, I'm going to go ahead and remove it now. And the VPC user has been successfully removed. Now let's talk about the libra.so module. Armand uses an SBT module named libra.so for all backup and recovery operations to the ZDLRA. This module is installed in the Oracle Home Lib directory. And you can see that the library is installed in Oracle Home Lib. There is a Java installer for the module that can be downloaded from OTN. Let's take a quick look at the OTN page for the installer download. There's one installer for all, all platforms. The installer will download the correct version of the module for your platform and configure the Oracle wallet. We will discuss the Oracle wallet further in the next section. Directions for running the installer are included in the raREADME.txt file. Alternatively, you can just manually download the platform dependent version from MOS, copy it to the Oracle Home Lib directory, and manually create and configure the Oracle wallet. The latest libra.so module for each supported platform can be downloaded from Mosno 2219812.1. Let's take a quick look at the Mosno. Here are all the supported versions. Just download the module, module for your platform, unzip it, and copy to the Oracle Home Lib directory on your protected database server. Let's move on to wallet configuration. The VPC user credential is securely stored in an Oracle wallet. It is important to note that this is a different wallet from the encryption wallet used by Trans Transparent Data Encryption, or TDE. The location of the wallet is defined in the SQLnet.org file. Let's take a look at a SQLnet.org file that has been configured for ZDLRA. In this case, we are on the protected database server. If ZDLRA replication is configured, there will be a similar configuration on the ZDLRA itself. First, notice the SQLnet.wallet override 
is set to true. This is the entry that tells the clients to use the Oracle wallet for authentication. It is required to be set. Now notice the wallet location entry. The directory clause defines a location of the Oracle wallet. The first time the wallet location is added in a SQL written or a file, or any time the directory is changed, the instance must be bounced to read the location. As long as the directory does not change, subsequent changes to the credentials stored in the Oracle wallet do not require the instance to be bounced. Let's take a look at the wallet itself. I'll change to the wallet directory. The cwallet.sso file is the wallet file itself. The lock file is used internally. Just leave it there unless you're deleting the wallet entirely. The wallet file is encrypted. We can use the make store command to create, view, and edit the file. Let's look at the credential stored in the wallet using make store list credential. We can see there is one credential stored in this wallet. There could be additional credentials stored in it. If you have multiple ZDLRAs, there could be an entry for each ZDLRA. In fact, you can add entries for your own applications as well. The credential has three parts, only two of which are shown here. The first part is the connect string. It must match exactly the connect string you're using to connect to the ZDLRA. The second part is the username that will be used for the connection. It will be the VPC user for the databases using this wallet. The third part is not shown. It is the password for the username. It is added when the credential is created, but is never displayed. We'll now use the wallet to make a connection to the ZDLRA. We can see that we are connected to RANYC as the VPC sales user. Let's examine the connect string a bit closer. Notice the slash at followed by the exact connect string stored in the wallet. With SQLnet.wallet override set to true in the SQLnet.org file, the client will look up the connect string in the wallet and connect with the corresponding username and password. The password is encrypted throughout the connection process, so this is a very secure connection method. In this case, the wallet was already created with a credential. Let's go through the process of creating a wallet and adding a credential. We won't actually use this wallet, so I'll just create it in a subdirectory in slash temp, then delete it when we are done. This is the new directory, so it is empty. We'll now create the wall. We can see that there is now a wallet file. It is important that the wallet be created as an auto login wallet. The wallet cannot have a password on it, since it will be used programmatically, not interactively. If we list the credentials, there are none. We've created the wallet, but have not added any credentials. No credentials are, are shown. Now let's add a credential.
Since I did not specify a password on the command line, it will prompt me now. I could have just typed the password after the username if I were sure no one was watching. Now, when we list a credential, we'll see the one I just added. MyDB could be a TNS alias defined in tnsnames.ora or a name server. If I were trying to connect with the app MyDB, MyDB would be looked up in one of the methods defined in the names directory path in sqlnet.ora, then connect as my user using the password I supplied when I created the credential. Since this was just an example, I'll just remove the wallet directory and its contents. Now, let's review the protected database RMAN configuration for the recovery points. We'll connect to RMAN, both target and catalog, then review the RMAN configuration. We'll use the Oracle wallet credential for the RA catalog connection. Let's take a few a look at a few of the configuration items. Retention policy is not used with the recovery appliance. Retention is controlled by the assigned protection policy on the recovery appliance. It can be ignored here. Control file auto backup is on. Generally, this should always be on, even when not using the recovery appliance. The default device type is set to SPT tape. The ZDLRA uses the RMAN SPT interface, so it is considered to be tape, even though the backups are really stored on disk. This is a small test database, so parallelism is set to one. For your larger databases, you would want to set this higher, maybe four or eight. Only backups are supported with the SPT tape channel. A special note, we want to examine the channel device configuration. Note that the SPT library is set to the libra.so module. Also note that the wallet location is set to the wallet directory and the credential alias is set to the VPC user credential in the wallet. This configuration tells RMAN how to allocate the channels to the recovery appliance. Archive log deletion policy is set to apply on all standby. When real-time redo shipping is enabled, the protected database sees the RA as a standby database. This configuration allows the FRA to automatically delete archive logs that have been sent to the RA using real-time redo. For database versions prior to 12.2, the deletion policy needs to be set to ship to all standby. Consult Oracle support for further details on special settings for older databases. Now, let's take a look at the initialization parameters that have been set for real-time redo shipping. Real-time redo shipping uses the same mechanism to ship redo as database. The ZDLRA is just another log log type list. The difference is that a standby database applies the redo to the database, or the ZDLRA just backs up the redo as backed up archive logs. This is the standard data guard destination for the standby database. This is the ZDLRA destination. Notice that it uses the same connection string that is defined in the Oracle wallet credential.
The digital array is also added to the data guard configuration. Finally, the redo transport user is set to the VPC user. While you could already be using a redo transport user for data guard, many customers let it default to sys. However, for real-time redo shipping to a ZDLRA, it is required to set this to the VPC user. When a protected database has both a standby database and a real-time redo shipping enabled to a ZDLRA, the VPC user must be created in the protected database and be granted sysoper and sysdg privileges. Let's look at the password file users. You can see that the VPC user has a sysoper and sysdg privileges. Of course, the VPC user also has create session. A question I often often get from customers is how do I verify that real-time redo shipping is working? Of course, you can check the protected databases page in Enterprise Manager, but it is very easy to verify it without Enterprise Manager too. All we need to do is, a, is switch a log and check for its backup in our menu. Let's find the current log sequence number. We can see that the current sequence number is 13732. If we check our main, we'll see that this sequence is not currently backed up. No backup exists in the RMAN catalog yet. Now let's switch a log and see what happens. Let's wait a few seconds for the backup arch task to queue and complete. Remember, the redo is already on the RA and is fully protected. It just needs to be compressed and recorded in the RMA catalog. There it is. We did not run our man to back it up, so it must have been sent by real-time reading shipping. Also notice the handle begins with $RSCN. This also indicates it was received as real-time reading. If it does not appear in the RMA catalog, you can check the database alert log for any errors. Enterprise Manager is quite a bit behind the scenes. While that is good, it is also important to understand the configuration. With this understanding, you'll be better prepared to troubleshoot any issues that may arise. I hope you have found this session to be educational and useful.